Thanks to photosynthesis, plants could grow and evolve, and it has served as the foundation for other living beings such as the dinosaurs and the human species. Photosynthesis takes place in leaves of flowers, bushes, and trees. First, let's find out what a leaf looks like. On top, we can see a thin layer of wax called cuticula. It minimizes water loss and increases the stability and resistance of the epidermis. The main task of the epidermis is the protection of the leaf cells. Cuticula and epidermis can be found on both sides of the leaf. On top of the epidermis, in the bottom, is a spongy tissue. It allows the interchange of gases for photosynthesis. Furthermore, vascular bundles, which can often be seen with the naked eye, allow the transportation of water, minerals, and other products. The palisade cells can be found on top of these veins. Palisade cells contain many chloroplasts that can be seen here as green dots. Chloroplasts absorb a major portion of the light energy used for photosynthesis. So let's have a look at one of them. Chloroplasts have a protective membrane. A liquid, called stroma, is found inside the chloroplast. Thylakoids are embedded in this liquid. Thylakoids consist of a thylakoid lumen surrounded by a membrane where photosynthesis takes place. If we take a close look at the thyloid membrane, we see the photosystem too. It is linked to the stroma and the lumen. PS2 consists of light harvesting complexes that surround a photosynthetic reaction center to focus energy. Light harvesting complexes consist of chlorophyll, such as chlorophyll A or chlorophyll B. These chlorophyllists absorb light, namely photons, and transfer the energy to the photosynthetic reaction center. This is the reason why plants are green, as light with a wavelength of about 500 to 600 isn't absorbed but reflected. This is called green gap. The energy of the photons cause the chlorophyll molecule to enter an excited state and electrons are ejected from the molecule. As a consequence, the molecule is charged positively. To absorb other photons, the molecule must return to its initial state. Therefore, it is in need of electrons. To get them, the PS2 uses water. Here, electrons are ejected from H atoms and the H atoms are separated from the O atom. This happens several times and, as a result, two O atoms combine to form an oxygen molecule that will be emitted later by the leaf. Simultaneously, the positively charged hydrogen ions get into the lumen. The electrons are transported to the PS1 via an electron transfer chain. In the course of this electron transport, protons are being created that get into the lumen. This will result in a protein gradient between the lumen and the stroma, generating a force called proton motive force. Proton motive force drives ATP synthase that produces ATP from ADP and a phosphate group. This process is called oxidative phosphorylation. The electrons that are transported from PS2 to PS1 are used to balance the loss of electrons in PS1 because PS1 absorbs light and this results in the oxidation of PS1 and the release of electrons. Electrons coming from PS1 are transported through an electron transport chain to their final electron adapter, NAPD, creating NADPH. ATP and NADPH, which are products of this process, can then be found in the stroma, where a process known as Calvin cycle takes place. No light is necessary for the Calvin cycle. During the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide is reduced to form carbohydrate in a series of reactions. Here, NADPH is the reducing power source whereas ATP is the energy source. Glucose is the primary product. 
it serves as an energy source for the plant itself. In the forms of polymers, such as starch, it is also an energy source for animals and human beings. By producing oxygen and capturing energy from inorganic compounds to produce organic compounds, plants are considered to be a very important part of nature and life.